Our homework tonight is all about the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula is a formula that we use for quadratic equations. Imagine that. So here's our formula here. It's this big, ridiculous looking formula with a lot of variables in it. But don't worry, you don't have to memorize this. Um, it's going to be on your SOL formula sheet. So um, just we need to understand how to use it, but it's okay if we don't memorize it. So here's where it comes from, okay? It comes from our standard form, which says ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So in order to pick out a, b, and c, our equation must be in standard form. So we use the quadratic formula when we're trying to factor or solve a quadratic equation that isn't easily factored. So an example would be something like this. So x squared minus 6x plus 4. If we were to try to factor that in our calculator, x squared minus 6x plus 4, we're going to end up getting these really weird decimals as our answers. So if you ever get a decimal, the first thing I would definitely check is to make sure that your, your mode is in um, auto or fraction. Since ours is in the correct mode, or yours would say fraction, that means that this is something that's not easily factored. Okay, So this is something that you can't just write this as your answer. You're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So in order to do that, we'll identify a. So a is just 1, b is negative 6, and c is 4. Okay, so there's a, b, c. And we're going to plug this into our formula. So we have x equals negative b, or negative negative 6, so positive 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so in parentheses negative 6 squared, minus 4 times a times c. And all of that is over 2 times a, or 1. So again, it's coming directly from this formula. You do not have to memorize it. You just have to be able to find it on your formula sheet. OK, so let's go from here. Now, I would not recommend just plugging this entire thing into your calculator. What we're going to do first is we're going to simplify what's underneath the radical, and then we'll simplify the bottom as well. So we have 6 plus or minus the square root of something. Now you can put the square root of, you can put this in your calculator. So I'm going to quit out of my app. So second quit, and you kind of just do that as much as you need to, OK? And let's plug this in. I have negative 6 squared, so there's negative 6 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 4. Make sure that we've typed it in correctly. Negative 6 in parentheses squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. That gives me 20, OK? So I have 6 plus or minus the square root of 20 over 2 times 1 is just 2. Okay. Now we're going to want to simplify the square root of 20, so I'm going to kind of do that off to the side. The square root of 20 can be broken down into 5 and 4. 5 can't be factored any further, but 4 can. 2 times 2. So remember back to the beginning of the year when we did this. 2 comes on the outside. The square root of 5 is left. Okay, So we're going to replace 2 root 5 with the square root of 20. So this is what our answer really looks like. 6 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. OK, here's what we do next. Instead of leaving this as one big fraction, we're going to split it apart. OK, so we're going to have this. I know it's a lot happening, but here. We're going to have 6 over 2. So that's 6 over this 2, plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. Now we can simplify our fractions. 6 over 2 becomes 3, so we have 3 plus or minus 2 root 5 over 2. The 2's just cancel. 3 plus or minus the square root of 5. So our final answer can be written like this. Plus, we're going to have 1 that has the plus, so 3 plus the square root of 5, and then here we have 3 minus the square root of 5. So those are our two solutions. Okay, so x equals this and this. And if we check that, 3 plus the square root of 5, it's going to be this crazy decimal. 3 plus the square root of 5 is some ridiculous decimal, and then 3 minus the square root of 5 is going to be a crazy decimal as well. So those are both irrational numbers. Let's try another example, because I know that was a lot to look at. OK, so we're going to use our quadratic formula up here. 
my a is 1, and I like to, I'm going to label that, a equals 1, b equals 10, and c equals negative 2, okay? So we have negative b, so negative 10, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 10 squared, minus 4 times a times c. All of that is over 2a, or 2 times 1. Okay, so let's simplify this. I've got negative 10 plus or minus the square root of something over 2, and we'll use our calculator to plug this. So let's simplify what's underneath the radical. So we have 10 squared minus 4 times a times c, 4 times a times c. And if you notice, you notice anything that I typed in incorrectly in my calculator? Yeah, that should be a negative 2, so be very, very careful when you're typing this, negative 2. Awesome. Okay, so this is the square root of 108. Okay. So now we're going to see if we can simplify 108. So you can um, write this out by looking for factors of 108. Uh, one thing you can do is you can go to y equals and do 108 divided by x and then go to the table. This is one way to see a bunch of factors, and we're going to look to see if we can find any perfect squares. Hey, 108 has factors of 3 and 36, so 108, oops, he's not 180. 108 can be factored into 3 and 36. 36 is factored into 6 and 6. So we can write the square root of 108 as 6 root 3. So it's going to be negative 10 plus or minus the square root of 6 root 3 over 2. Okay. And then we'll simplify each part. So like the previous example, we're going to break apart this fraction. So it's the first term over 2, the second term over 2. We'll do the same thing here. So we're going to have negative 10 over 2 plus or minus 6 root 3 over 2. And almost there, we can simplify this a little bit further. Negative 10 divided by 2 is going to give us 5 root 2. I'm going to actually add um, a sticky note on top of this because I know I don't have a lot of room. So if you need to, you know, attach a separate sheet of paper, do whatever you need to do to make sure you have enough room. So this is going to become negative 5 plus or minus 3 root 3. 6 divided by 2 is what gave us that 3. And then we'll write this as two solutions. So x equals negative 5 plus 3 root 3 and negative 5 minus 3 root 3. So those are our two solutions. They're kind of crazy, but we should be able to write our solutions as um, terms with, with radicals. All right, for this next one, we're going to have to make it into standard form, okay? So we, that means we want to have our equation equal to 0, so we want this side to be 0. We're going to have to subtract 4x from both sides. Subtract 4x. So now we have x squared minus 4x minus 11 equals 0. This tells us our a, our b, and our c. Our a is 1 our b is negative 4, and our c is negative 11. Okay, now we can plug this into our quadratic formula. So we have negative b, or negative negative 4, so positive 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a times c, which is negative 11. All of that is over 2a. So 2 times 1. 4 plus or minus the square root of this ridiculous number. It's going to be over 2. So I'm going to quit out of that. And I'm going to simplify this underneath the radical. Negative 4 squared minus 4 times a times negative 11. 4 times a times negative 11. So that's the square root of 60. And we can definitely simplify the square root of 60. So let's break that down. The square root of 60, let's see, that's 5 and 12. 12 becomes 
4 and 3. This becomes 2 and 2. So the square root of 60 becomes 2 root whatever's left over. So 5 and 3, so 2 root 15. Okay, so I'm going to use another sticky note to give myself a little bit more room. I know this is a lot of work, guys. So we've got this. I've got 4 plus or minus this 2, I'm sorry, 2 square root 15 over 2. So we'll write our answer as two parts. x equals, we'll divide the first part. 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus square root of 15 and 2 minus the square root of 15. 